Good morning, SLIS students. It is the 21st of June here in Houston, which means it's the 22nd in Guam. So yesterday was the uh, summer solstice, which in Houston was about 6.09 Central Daylight Time, which is the longest day of the year. A uh, little astronomy fact for you guys. Uh, that and an asteroid is heading for the Earth. I'm just kidding. Actually, I have no idea, but I assume not. Um, so that, that one I made up. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, CSS applied to the images file assignment and exactly what I'm expecting you guys to do. And I'm starting here on the assignments page, which I have reworked. You'll notice that the intro to web design assignments, instead of being a big long list of uh, items all clumped together or all listed together, I've made it into an unordered list, which is what these little bullets here, a bulleted list, you might say in Word. In HTML, we call this an unordered list, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. But anyway, so each of the assignments that we've been working on this term are in chronological order here. So you'll notice that there's one that's labeled apply CSS to inline images. So what I'm expecting you to do is to actually open with your text editor the HTML file that you worked on when you were writing your inline images assignment and add things to it. So you'll have one HTML file that will actually represent the solution to two separate problems, two separate work assignments here. One of them was the inline uh, images, which you should have already done, and the second is to edit that file to add in the stuff that makes the CSS work which I've got quite a lot of information here about. <clears throat> You'll notice I'm telling you to add a, uh, a new line, a new chunk of HTML here. There's a tag called link, which will have the browser actually go open up this href right here, this file. Notice it's not .html, it's .css. This is a cascading style sheet. And I'm hosting it on Peak of Alpes. So I've already written the CSS. You're not supposed to write any CSS for this particular assignment. You're just supposed to uh, write your code correctly. And my CSS will actually change your page. So um, I've got a little bit of information in here about that. But I'm going to tell you that you should surround each of your sections that used to be uh, HTML, I mean IMG, and you had a paragraph. I'm asking you to alter that code. Surround the entire chunk from the h2 all the way to the paragraph with something called figure slash figure and i've written css to specifically change the way the figure tag would normally behave so leave your h2 in place leave your img source all that stuff in place change the paragraph to a caption so notice that i've replaced my p with fig caption slash fig caption and that is nested actually inside the figure tag what this does is it tells the browser that your image is not just a picture but it's a picture that will have a caption and in the css i can actually affect the way that figures look so maybe you're writing a page where you want some images to be displayed one way and other images to be displayed a second way figure is one way to kind of separate images from things that are going to be figures. So I've written an example page here. I've written HTML, which I've posted on my uh, EUID's website, jn0074.peakofvolpes.net. So that's what yours should look like if you've written your HTML correctly. Notice that my second image is still not a real image. That's I put in fake text. So I'm going to go into Text Wrangler and show you what I mean. So here's the first figure. First of all, everything needs to be inside article. So, and I mentioned that before, from line 10 all the way to line 25. So everything is separated out as its own element. If I were to pull, writing a PHP script that would pull separate articles from one big long page, this would be its own item. Everything from here to here could be its own kind of self-contained unit, which is kind of the way the figures work too. This figure is a self-contained unit, and here's another one. So here's my original uh, first image where I've got an H2 that says Transit of Venus, the image tag and the fig caption, and then another one, figure, and then a, one that's not really an image title, which is why source equals Flickr URL.jpg. That's not a real file or a real URL. I just obviously made that up, which is why when I switch back to the browser, my I'm using Chrome here instead of Firefox, but it shows a little broken image. Now, it still gives me the width and the height, which is one of the reasons why you put that in the HTML. So even though I put width equals 150 and there's not an image, it still draws a box around it. Now I did the box with CSS, which I'll talk about in a second, but this is a way for your flow to still work. Even if the picture breaks, 
the text is still on the page and the layout is still the same. And even though it's annoying that the image is broken, you can still have the rest of the page work. And now that I switch back to the HTML, this is the HTML that applies the CSS. So look, here's my link style sheet, which is the, the attribute that you should set for the value you should set for the attribute rel just like hrefs value is the attribute http clone slash slash peekablepiece.net slash images.css you do have to have the http colon slash slash the browser has to know that we're not talking about the same computer where image page template.html is we're talking about a totally different place so go out onto the net and get this file that way my css and my html can be on two totally different servers and everything still functions correctly because technically, peakofvolpes.net is not the same server as jn0074.peakofvolpes.net. The way I've set up my web servers, each of you kind of has your own. So let's look at the CSS, since I'm already taking too long on this. Maybe I'll just talk more slowly. Not really. So I've taken one of the CSS uh, files from later in the book, and I've altered it quite a bit. I've shortened it up. Um, <clears throat> CSS is not HTML. It's kind of its own language. It's not a programming language. It's uh, a styling language. And it's kind of like markup in that you apply certain effects to text or images or even uh, layouts like boxes and stuff like that. CSS is more particular than HTML. It, uh, notice that in order to do a comment, you have to do this kind of comment. Instead of the, in HTML, it would look like this. And that would be your comment. In CSS, that's not a comment. You have to do this slash star, star slash. So everything in between these two things here, this slash star, star slash, those are comments, which means it's there for the web developer to read. So up here I've put my name and the date. I've put, uh, well, actually I copied and pasted all of this stuff here. So from line 3 to line 13. The line 12 there, that's actually code that's designed to let older browsers work with brand new CSS because the some of the CSS I'm using here and some of the HTML I'm using represents HTML5 and CSS3. And some old browsers may not be ready for that. So this is a way to allow older browsers to understand the newer tags and the newer CSS without throwing up, without breaking, without displaying it in a crazy way. So um, that's what's going on there. Um, later on, I'll talk more about the details of CSS, but I did want to mention that I've changed the attributes of the article tag. Look at lines 25 through 29. For in between those two sets of curly braces there, I've altered the way the article normally looks. Normally, article doesn't do anything in the browser. With my CSS, I've made it draw a background, well, display a background color and draw a dotted border that's one pixel wide. And I've changed the margin on the H2 tag. And I've made figures do different things too, background color, and there's a solid line and different things there as well. Um, and the same with IMG and fig caption. So inside my CSS, I'm actually altering the way that those HTML tags normally operate. I'm changing them to... Uh, look a different way. I can change the font. I can change the the margins, the padding. I can change where they sit on the page. I can have them left justified or right justified or floating around. I can write separate columns. HTML is, uh, is kind of limited in what it can do, but CSS is not. So if you combine HTML and CSS together, you can do some ridiculous uh, layout things that are just insane. Later on, I'll talk more about the CSS Zen Garden, and you'll see more about what I mean. But right now, you're not supposed to touch this CSS at all. I've already written it and it's good to go. You can't even access it uh, via your text editor. All you can do is see it via the web. So all you're supposed to do is edit your original HTML file that had the inline images. Add to that the, oh, let's go back to the HTML. Add to the HTML this guy right here. And as long as you put all of your tags in the same structural kind of setup as I have, the CSS will automatically work. You don't have to do anything to your HTML to make the CSS work other than tell HTML where to go get the style sheet. Okay? If you have any questions, let us know.